Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Cheated and Became Red Dragon of Remnant Part 5. Before we start please go support ZBX6779 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Part 13. Huntsman. EXD Verse. The Eleven are still in the dungeon. Seraphal entered one day. Seraphal. Dot dot we devised a perfect punishment for you eleven fools. You are all now engaged to each other. The eleven are shocked, they want to protest, but they know Seraphal is super pissed, protesting will only make things worse. Seraphal. You all know his last words, he wished you all a happy marriage. Asia is only exempted from this because of his last wish. All of the cocks will wear slutty wedding themed dresses with chastity belts, while the sluts will wear nothing at all, except for chastity cages. It's going to be a private event and those who know about what you all did will attend. Asia will also be a part of that in any way she can. She looks at Rias, Riser, Ravel and Serg. Seraphal. Some of you are related by blood, but that won't help. You will marry each other. See you shit later. She leaves and half the prisoners vomit. Asia was on her way home from school where she's just as alone as at home. Sona appears and gave her an envelope then left. She opened it, read it, felt nauseated and ran home, her stomach starts to feel funny and pukes in the toilet. Later that night, everyone is gathered and the guilty party is now in the first ever eleven-way marriage. Asia was the waitress for the event, the eleven were humiliated in front of their families and friends. Riaz was now not only married to Riser, but to her own cousin and everyone else. The whole time she and the others hoped that Issei would come and save them, but he didn't show up. The office was there watching as they were crying, Zenobia was having some headache after another from praying, Irina was at the house spending time with her friends Mitsuda, Motohama, Aika, Murayama and Kadis. It has been a while since Issei left, they miss him. The guys stopped acting perverted too. In Remnant. When Issei would be out flying, training with the Ace Ops, checking up on the growing dust crystals or helping around in the lab, Yang would go to Ironwood and show him the picture. Currently, she, JNPR, Ozpin and Crow are in the room. Winter is training with Raven and Weiss. Ruby is with Maria and practicing precise control over her silver eyes. Yang. General, is there a way to find out who these people are? He looks at the picture. Ironwood. As long as they leave some sort of record then we should be able to find them. Why do you ask? Yang. I believe they are the ones who heard Issei some time back and we need to know why. Nora. You took that picture from his phone. John. I don't think that was a smart move Yang. Nora. Guys, she gestures towards Pura who is concerned. Ozpin. You do know something Miss Nikos. Pura. The redhead is named Rias. He accidentally called me by her name once. Ren. Dot I can sense a lot of fear and anger within him. Dot I've been able to see Aura but never sense it, except for his, and it's not like ours. Ironwood. Let me check the database. He scans the image and searches. After a while of trying he couldn't find anyone in that phone except for Issei. None of them exist in any database. Ironwood. These people are either off the grid or don't exist. Yang. Can we keep looking? Ironwood. Yes, everyone in this photo except for Issei could be dead, missing and their record expunged or just non-existent, but this photo is real, so the last one is impossible. I'll continue to look into it, but did he ever tell any of you about his past? Ozpin. Not much. Just that he needs a fresh start. I assumed he committed a serious crime or several, but that wasn't the cause. He was hurting. Pura. He has some old technology with him. He called it a smartphone. Maybe we can use that to find out where it was made. It's fully functional. Ironwood. Dot him. I'll see what I can find out. This stays between us and doesn't leave this room until more information is gathered. Ozpin. James, I've been meaning to ask. What did you tell the council about the missile launch? Ironwood. I told them that we found a large grim spawning pool in the barren wasteland and showed a video clip of it. They accepted it and now we can continue firing at Salem without questions being asked. Ozpin. Very well. Nice work. They agree. Ironwood continues to search for Issei's former team while the others are looking at the photo. Pura. He's right I do look a little like her. Yang. Dot dot all of them dot dot are so beautiful. She felt inferior beauty wise compared to the girls in the photo. Nora. Hey come on don't compare yourself to them. You think looks matter. If they did then why isn't he with them? None had an answer. Nora. Exactly they are the ones that hurt him badly enough to abandon them. Yang. Dot dot just looking at them makes me angry. Yang. And jealous. Her hair starts to glow a bit. John. Easy Yang. If we ever find them then we get answers first. Yang. Dot dot fine. Ozpin. Dot James dot. Ironwood. Yes. Ozpin. We need to focus on taking down Salem first dot let's worry about Issei later. I can tell he's focused as well and not letting his past get in the way. He's been on our side from the start. Children let's respect his privacy. Delete the photo Miss Xiaolong. Yang. Dot alright. 
She looks at it once more and deleted it. Nora. I'm gonna go visit grandma. Anything you guys need me for. Ozpin. We will have a meeting soon and ask the lamp the questions. We're also going to get the staff afterwards. You're all dismissed. They leave, Yang goes to Asay's dorm and sees that he's sleeping. She knows that he's helping out a lot and the classes are tougher here than in Beacon. They recently became second year students too. Yang still felt bad for upsetting Asay, she's thinking about how she could make it up to him. She closes the door and leaves, as she's walking to her dorm, she can't help but compare herself to the girls in the photo. Yang. They are all so beautiful. Their bodies are the gold standard, and I mean, maybe I'm not feminine enough. I never was the type to act ladylike. She felt really upset. She went to her dorm and just lays in bed. Raven later knocked on the door and came inside. Raven. You okay, Yang? Yang. Not really, she sat in her bedside. Raven. Is it about what happened yesterday? Yang nods. Raven. Yang. It's I. I think it's best to leave it alone for now. I'm not really good at this. Yang smiled a bit. Yang. You're here and you're trying. Thanks, mom. Raven caresses her hair. Raven. So you have your first real crush and your kiss. How does it feel? Yang. It feels dot one sided. Raven. That's how it works. Yang. And the kiss. Dot, I know he hated it, but to me it felt right. Raven. I wouldn't say he hated it, it just surprised him. I know you're a flirty girl, but you never made a move on anyone until yesterday. Yang. How would you know? Raven. Yang I've been watching you grow up hiding in plain sight. Surely you must have noticed something out of the ordinary. Yang starts thinking about what she meant, going through memory lane, and then realized what she's talking about. Yang. That Raven always watching me. Raven smirked. Yang. You've been there all this time. Raven. Dot always. Yang's hugs her mother. Raven. This isn't so bad after all. Night time. Issei is on the roof as per his routine, he was just staring at the moon. Yang knows he's there and gets two drinks, she goes up to the roof and to him. Yang. Care for a drink. Issei. Sure. She hands him the drink. Issei. Thanks. Yang. You knew I was here. I didn't make a sound. Issei. I knew you would come here after seeing my routine. Yang. Dot dot can we talk. Issei. If it's about what happened yesterday dot. Yang. It is a say I know what I did was wrong, but, a say. Sai Yang I told you that it's fine, but bringing it up repeatedly will create more problems. Dot. It was the heat of the moment, but the moment has passed. I know I'm being an asshole, but I'm not going to lead you on. That would be worse. Yang is visibly upset but appreciates his honesty. A say. Hey dot do you want to fly? Yang. Huh? A say. Fly, it's something I enjoy and it might cheer you up. Yang. But I'm kind of heavy. A say. Yang I've been piled on by White Fang members during the Battle of Beacon, and that didn't stop me, you're a featherweight. Yang. You don't think I'm on the heavy side. Issei. Oh for the love of fine I'll be honest once more. Just because you have a little muscle on you doesn't make you a brute, you're no less than any other woman. Don't use these tricks with me or anyone, it's crazy confusing, and it ruins a lot of things. Yang. Okay sorry. Issei. It's fine just don't go fishing for compliments, have more confidence in yourself. Now finish your drink and let's go. It's a nice night for flying. Yang cheers up and they finish their drink. Issei. Get on my back. Yang. But it'll be pressed against your wings. Issei. Yang when I jump, sit on my lower back and grab onto my hands. You can think of this as your late birthday gift. Yang. If you can handle me riding you then sure. Issei. Ha 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 there's the confident Yang we all know and love. Get on. She gets on his back and he jumps off the edge they're still falling. Yang sits on his lower back and holds his hangs, but he still hasn't flapped his wings. Yang. Um Issei now would be a good time to fly. Issei. He flaps his wings and they lift off. Issei. Ha 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 got ya. Yang. Don't scare me like that ever again. She bonks him in the head. Issei. Okay, okay. Ha ha. She smiles, looks around and feels the cold night air. He flies higher and higher and way out in the open. She holds onto his hands tightly and closes her eyes because she's never been up so high. Issei. You're not going to fall. I've got you. Open your eyes and look. She opens them and feels Issei's hand hold her tightly. She can see all of Atlas and Mantle being illuminated by the moonlight. Then she spots what looks like a small cluster of stars on the fields in Atlas. Yang. What's that? Issei. That's what I want to show you. Hang on tight. He flies down and lands smoothly in the field. She sees crystals glowing in the moonlight. Yang. It's beautiful. Issei. These are dust crystals that started growing here. How you ask? I have no idea. Yang. Growing crystals. That's not possible. Issei. We can let the scientists figure that out. Hmm this one looks like it can be used. He picked up a piece of dust from the growing cluster, it's light dust and it glows brightly for its small size. Yang. Wow. Issei. 
Remnant is full of surprises. Yang. Yeah. He picks an ice dust scale from his arm and then crushed both pieces in his left hand. Yang. What are you doing? I say. Get your camera ready and start recording, make sure I don't appear in the video. He backs away and she starts recording. He put the top of his closed fist to his mouth and blew the instant he opened his palm. Glowing snow spreads everywhere and slowly falls everywhere, he flapped his wings gently and they spread out in all directions. The glowing snow combined with the moonlight and dust crystals was breathtaking. Yang was recording, but her eyes then fell upon Issei, the glowing snow illuminated the small smile he has, she then saw the hint of red on Issei's usually black wings. Yang. They were dread before dot. Some glowing snow then fell on her hands, she felt the cool sensation. He grabbed her scroll and recorded a reaction. She saw the snow surround her, and one flake landed on her nose, it tickled her, and she let out a small giggle. It looked like fireflies hovering around her and shed light on her beauty. When the glowing snow finally fell to the ground, he flaps his wings strongly, and it all flew away into the wind. He stopped recording when they looked like stars in the sky, a perfect video. He hands his scroll back to her. I say. What do you think? Feeling better? Yang. Way better. Yang gets a call from Ruby. Yang. What's up Ruby? Dot dot yeah I'm out for some fresh air yeah I'm fine dot dot okay I'm on my way. I say. Let's get to back to your team. She hops on his back and takes off, he flies her to the rooftop. I say. Thank you for flying air I say, and I hope you enjoyed your flight. Yang. Pfftt, ha 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 ha. I say. See you around. He flies away and she goes back to her dorm. Weiss. Where have you been? Yang was smiling happily and felling all giddy inside. Yang. Somewhere magical, Ruby. Dot you were with Issei again. Yang. Yup. We were out flying. Blake. What else? Yang. This. She plays the video on her scroll, and they are mesmerized especially Yang. She though he was recording the snow, but he captured her smile. Her lilac eyes illuminated by the snow. Yang's team are awestruck. Ruby. Beautiful. Weiss. Just how. Blake. Details please Yang. Yang. Alright so here's what happened, she begins to tell the story. With Crow, Raven, Ospin and Ironwood. Ironwood. Damn it I can't find those kids on the image. We found Salem, but we can't find a few children. Crow. Time to tell us who this kid really is Oz. It's like he just showed up out of thin air. Ospin. I've been honest, I told you all and will tell the world about Salem, our biggest threat, so why is our ally who gave us a massive advantage such an issue? Raven. Because we know nothing about him. Ironwood. Only what his records tell us about him, but nothing about his background. It's like these are fake. Raven. Ospin, did you help him with that? Ospin, Raven. That silence can only mean yes. Ospin. All right, yes, I helped him and accepted him into Beacon. Crow. You let a random kid into the academy. He could have been a spy or something. Ospin. He was looking for a home and uses his abilities to help people. I won't turn away a troubled soul, just like I let you two into Beacon when you were around his age. Don't be so quick to judge, you two don't let many people know about your pasts. Crow, Raven, Ironwood. Sigh I know he's a good man, but he's so powerful, he wasn't phased by Salem, the relics, the maidens or anything else. It's like he's used to it. Raven. Which makes him more suspicious. He also knew where Salem is hiding when no one else did. Maybe she gave him his powers. He doesn't have ore like we do. Ospin. I doubt he's a spy working for her. He's simply smart enough to figure out her location when the rest of us were not. He helped us every step of the way, he saved me and Beacon, helped you reunite with your family, saved the fall maiden Amber and the winter maiden Freya, who is spending her days with family without a target in her back. If he was working with Salem then doing the opposite would be much faster. Crow. Dot Raven he does make a few good points. I've been watching him since I met him, he's been a good friend to Ruby, Yang, their teammates and others. He trains the weakest students till they are strong. Look at that arc kid, he was the weakest in their group now he's one of the strongest. He's a gifted kid who knows right from wrong, his intentions are pure, so let's give him his space. Raven. HMP of course you'd say that. You're still so soft. Crow. You're just mad that he beat you. Raven. Why you? She was about to attack him. Ospin. Enough dot dot psi dot dot, just stop both of you. Raven I understand your suspicion, but not everyone with power wants to hurt others. He only hurts those who cross a line such as Adam Taurus. Raven. If he knew what you did then he would kill you. Crow. Ironwood. Ospin. I know I've made many mistakes, but it's time I want. I'm going to tell everyone and for that you are also needed. When the people see that even bandits are joining the fight against such a threat for the sake of Remnant, then others will too. Raven. I'm only here to make sure Yang sees the truth and comes home with me. I won't let what happened to Summer happen to her. Crow. Till this day you never told me what did happen to her. Ospin. 
Salem happened. After I told her and you two about Salem she went ahead and fought her and died, but not in vain. You saw the red marks on Salem. Summer found a way to hurt her permanently. Raven. Then what are you waiting for? Ironwood. We're currently building a wide-range broadcast tower that will send out a live video feed to every screen throughout Remnant. It'll take time so the staff stays in the vault, otherwise we risk losing it. Crow. Progress. Ozpin. I'm going to go check on Issei and the others. Raven. You two seem to be pretty close since you're on a first-name basis. Ozpin. I feel like I can trust him. He leaves with a relic of knowledge and Crow follows. He's making sure no one attacks him and takes the relic. Raven. You can't honestly trust Ozpin and that kid. Ironwood. Dot I do have some doubts. Raven. Then what are you going to do about it? Ironwood. I have an idea and I'll need your help. Raven. Dot dot what do you need? A cinder and emerald. They see a black liquid flow out of her. Cinder. Emerald whatever comes out of me kill it. She lays down and spreads her legs. Emerald sees something but can't tell if it's human, grim or a hybrid. Emerald. What the actual fuck? Cinder is pushing it out. She muffles her screaming so no one can hear and find whatever is happening. After what felt like an hour of agony, a nearly foot-long black mass comes out of her, and Emerald still can't tell if it's human or not. Cinder. Kill dotted. Emerald is about to shoot it, but it starts to disintegrate into smoke. Emerald. Don't have to dot it's already dead. Cinder. Huff good. She passes out. Emerald. Cinder. She holds her in her arms and sees that she's passed out from exhaustion. She cleaned her up and covers her in a blanket. Then she looks at the black sludge in the floor, there's a tiny lump in it. She pokes it with the blade attached to the bottom of her gun barrel, and it went in like hot knife through butter. It's a lump of cells that was forced to grow inside Cinder after the Grim raped her. She looked at Cinder. Emerald. Salem is going to pay for this. She makes a video and cleaned up what she could, and then burned the towels and clothes she used to clean it up with. Scene changed to Hazel and Mercury, Arthur had dropped them off near Mistral. He crashed the drone and then made his way to Atlas. Hazel. Any luck where we might find Emerald. Mercury. Emerald once told me about a lady who runs the underground black market. She knows about everyone who comes and goes into the city. Hazel. How do we find her? Mercury. In a pub in the corner of Mistral. They get to Mistral, find the pub and are immediately surrounded by people with spiderweb tattoos. There's a chubby lady sitting nearby, she has shoulder-length light brown hair and a beauty mark on her chin. Mercury. Miss Malachite. It's an honor to meet you. Malachi. And what can I do for you? Mercury. My colleague and I are looking for a friend, she's here somewhere in Mistral, and we lost contact. Her name is Emerald. Malachite. Ah yes, she's been spotted in a motel with a woman wearing a cloak. Clearly she's wanted. Mercury. Please, name your price. Malachite. I see you know how this works. Good. 3000 lean. Mercury takes out his wallet and gives her the money. She gives him a map. Malachite. Pleasure doing business with you. Mercury. Thank you ma'am. He bows respectfully and they leave. Hazel. Before you never gave a grim's ass about those two now you're doing whatever you can to look for them. Mercury. Dot let's hurry up. Little do they know that they are being followed. They get to the motel and knock on the room. Emerald uses her semblance to make her and Cinder invisible. Mercury opens the door and enters. Mercury. Emerald. You in here. She makes herself visible. Emerald. Mercury. Mercury. There you are. Hazel. Glad to see you're alright. She leaps towards them and hugs them. Emerald. I'm so happy to see you guys sniff dot. Hazel. You're okay now. Tell us what happened. She makes Cinder visible. Mercury. What happened to her? Emerald. What Salem did to her she was pregnant and something came out of her. Mercury. Her experiment didn't fail. Emerald. Watch this. She plays the video and they see what came out of Cinder. Mercury goes to the bathroom and vomits, Hazel looks away in disgust. Emerald. She passed out after an hour of agony. There was black goo everywhere. Mercury. Vomits again. Dot. Hazel. We should get her to a doctor. Emerald. And tell them what? That a grim raped and impregnated her. Hazel. Dot. Good point. There's still black streaks on the floor and a massive spot. Emerald. Hazel. Dot. Are you going to take us back to her? Hazel. She has no idea what happened to you or that we found you. Atlas found us and made the first move. It'll be a while until she's back. Emerald. What did they do? Mercury comes out of the bathroom. Mercury. That missile had a massive payload, it eviscerated the castle and everything for a few miles. Emerald. Dot I don't know if we joined the right side anymore. Hazel. We still have orders, we go to Atlas and destroy them from within. Arthur is already on his way there. Emerald. What about Cinder? Mercury. She comes with us, maybe we can find a physician who can give her a checkup and not blow our cover. Cinder wakes up. Emerald. Cinder how are you feeling? Cinder. Tired so very tired. 
Hazel. Rest. We'll stay on guard and find a way out of this mess. She gave him a small smile. Cinder. Maybe I'm not so alone after all. After a while she feels better, she manages to eat some food and stays hydrated. The other three were eating and planning their next move, Cinder. Thank you. Mercury started choking on his food. Hazel smacked him on the back and he swallowed it. Mercury. Sharp and hail thanks big guy. I though I heard you thank us. Emerald you're not using your semblance to get back at me or something right. Emerald. No you dumbass. Hazel. Children please eat your food. Cinder starts to laugh, they look at each other and laugh as well. Mercury. Haha <laughs> dot dot why are we laughing? Cinder. I'm dot dot just happier thanks to all of you. Hazel. This is nice, having dinner together. Emerald. It is, but RWBY and everyone else. They are in combat class, Issei and Weiss are sparring, both are holding back, the fight is getting drawn out, so Weiss uses her time glyph to move faster, but Issei promoted to knight and matched her speed, Issei was using the red katana and not Ascalon. Weiss. Why not use Ascalon? Issei. And risk breaking it. Woman it's my favorite sword. Weiss. Oh I see. She snaps her fingers and a gravity glyph appears below him, he's pulled down onto his knees. Y summons an armored Beowulf, and it attacks. Issei swings his sword and it decapitated the beast. He then slowly stood up while making it look like it's difficult. Weiss readies her rapier and tried to impale him, he held a light dust crystal in his left palm and held it in front of her rapier, she struck it and there's a blinding light, no one can see, she rubs her eyes as she backs away, she hits something and opens her eyes, she sees a hand grab her and pulls her backwards, she gasps and sees a red blade held to her throat. Issei. I win. She looks at him and he lets go. Weiss. Sigh, yeah dot dot you win. Teacher. The winner, Issei Hayato. Most of the students cheer, but some gave him death glares for holding Y so closely. They say. Oh the nostalgia dot. He combed his hair back and got a few looks from the girls, Yang blushed a bit. The two sat in their seats and continued with class. Ironwood is in his office looking through Issei's phone which he got through Raven's help. He finds the music and never heard of these artists, but found some of the remix in the internet. Ironwood. These appeared sometime after he joined Beacon. He found the image gallery and saw videos and pictures of his friends and family. There are more people whom he searched for but no records found. In the photos he sees mountain buildings etc and cross-check those. Ironwood. No matches. Issei. Who are you? You look pretty happy with these people so why are you here? He continues to check other apps, he found the call log and checked the numbers. No matches. These numbers didn't belong to anyone. He found the voicemail and found that it's full. All of them from the unknown numbers. He wants play, but then Issei will know that someone listened to them, he finds a way to copy them and save them in his computer. He then closed the apps and turned off the phone. Ironwood. Forgive me Issei, but there are no secrets between allies. Raven. She appears. Ironwood. Please put this back exactly where you got it. Raven. I know, I'm not stupid. She takes it and goes to his dorm, she put it back right where she found it. Back to class. Teacher. Alright students, we've covered today's lecture and have some time to spare. So I have an idea, why not have some fun? A small party just to enjoy ourselves. The class cheers. Teacher. Can anyone sing and play any instruments? Nora. John can play the guitar. John. Nora. Flint. I would like to play the saxophone, I rarely get to play that. Neon. Oh it's been a while. Yes let's do that. Teacher. Now we just need a singer or two. Mishni. Weiss. I can only sing certain types of song. Sorry. Hurrah. John I wouldn't mind trying. Issei. Arcos is in the spotlight once more. Here. He takes out his scroll and there are lyrics in a video. Teacher. All right musicians, listen to the song and get the rhythm down. They go to a corner and listen. After three minutes they go and their instruments. Teacher. Ready. John. Yes sir. Teacher. Hit it. The students cheer. Teacher. Loved it, you guys memorized every word and tune by listening to the song just once. You can be damn good musicians and singers on top of being huntsmen. Issei you picked a good song. How about you sing one? Issei. Dot I'd rather not. I get stage fright when I try to sing alone, so how about we all sing one? Lake. How about the sea shanty? Some of the students liked her pick. They started banging on their desks in perfect sync. Teacher. Wow well done everyone. You have great rhythm that will help you throughout your life. Him, I have an idea. I want everyone to write about certain topics, only your point of view, no books or references needed. Just what pops into your mind. Here are the topics. Overthinking, falling in love, life, death, the universe etc. Surprise me. Dismissed. Class. Thanks Mr. Simon. Everyone went to their dorms, the song became a favorite of many in Atlas Academy. Ironwood is currently listening to the voicemails. 
there's dozens of them and after an hour he was done. He was sitting there in the dark for a good while and refused contact with anyone. Ironwood. Huff this is just confusing me even more. We have to know who you are as say if that even is your real name. DMRWBY and JNPR are thinking about the topics and are writing what they can. Issei is in his dorm with a blank page. During the next class, everyone shared a little bit about what they learned in life and their views on the biggest questions, but not much of it is special. Teacher. Alright so Issei. What did you write about? Issei. Nothing. Teacher. Interesting. May I ask why? Issei. Because I share someone else's view on a certain topic after hearing it, he said it perfectly. Teacher. Care to tell us the topic? Issei. I'll play it. He plays a video. Teacher. Wow. Dot, but there's more. One doesn't simply overthink without a cause. I can tell you have experienced an event or events that changed your perception. Dot, what changed you from who you were to who you are now? Issei. Dot, dot, what changes most people Mr. Simon? Dot, dot, love. Teacher. Did you ever find love? Issei. Dot, yes. Yang flustered a bit. Everyone's eyes darted back between the teacher and Issei. Teacher. Where? Issei. Right in front of me. Teacher. What kind of love? Issei. Dot dot side dot the kind that changed everything I knew about anything. Teacher. Did you ever fall in love? Yang was listening intently. Issei. Dot I only remember falling. The class was silent, RWBY and JNPR are worried about him. Teacher. Dot it seems I brought up some painful experiences, I apologize. Issei. It's alright. It's a part of it. Teacher. Dot dot you know I never like the expression falling in love because in it there's the risk of the fall. No one can tell how long you'll fall dot what awaits at rock bottom or if there even is one dot dot the lessons here are to catch yourself should you fall and rise up, try to never fall and the biggest one. Choose to walk into love. You're all so young and may not understand it now but I hope you do the easy way dismissed. Little by little everyone walks out. Issei is the last one. Teacher. Issei. Issei. Sir. Teacher. Catch yourself cause if you take too long, you'll get used to it and never fly again. A plus on your assignment. Issei. Thank you sir. Dot. He leaves the classroom. John. You good. Issei. Yeah. Why. Ren. About what you said in there. Issei. Haha guys I'm fine. You heard that recording right. They nod. Issei. I simply followed the thought process and applied it to one of the topics. I got an A without doing anything. Yang. So all that dot was fake. Issei. It was real enough. Lake. What does that mean? Issei. Like Mr. Simon said, hope you find out the easy way. I'm gonna go ask Osbin about our next move. See you guys later. He flew to the office. Yang is conflicted about if Issei is just messing with them for attention or is actually hurting and not letting it show. Weiss. Ren can you tell what he's feeling using your semblance? Ren. Guys dot he's feeling everything. Ruby. What do you mean? Ren. When I look at people, I see certain colored leaves around them that show me which emotions they are feeling. Right now I'm seeing all of them and sometimes I don't see any at all but dot. John. But. Ren. I see rage dot so much suppressed rage in the shape of a dragon dot dot with green eyes. Ruby. Dot so you guys saw it too. Blake. I thought it was just my imagination. Weiss. So back at Beacon when he stood on the CCTS tower. There was a dragon silhouette standing behind him dot he certainly roared like one. Yang. Dot dot. Nora. Should we tell Ozpin? John. It's best that we do. We have no idea what's going on, and if we ask Issei then he's just going to avoid the question and fly away. Forcing it will do more harm than good. Hurrah. I agree. They go and look for him, they find him in Ironwood's office with him, Issei, Crow, Winter and Raven. Winter. Perfect timing. We have a few missions. Ruby. What kind? Ironwood. We've completed the broadcasting tower and we need some of you to guard it. There are Grim spotted near the site in large numbers. There are grim in the mines that are digging through the foundation, and we risk losing a large dust supply, the dust is unstable, so keep gun used to a minimum. Osbin. There's also another matter. There are reports of looting and rioting in Mantle. John. How come? I thought it was stable. Winter. Ever since the new laws were enforced, the old racist councilman was removed from power and put to work in the mines, and we believe he met shock, they may have instigated this. Those who share their view have created a political party and are competing against Robin Hill. She's fighting for equality while the opposition is fighting for supremacy. Weiss. Damn that old man. Dot dot have they attacked anyone? Ironwood. Not yet, they are doing it by the book, following the political procedure and elected their mayoral candidate. We legally can't do anything until they cross the line, so that's why some of you will be guarding Robin Hill and her team. John. But General we're just second year students. How can we fight this? Winter, Osborne, Crow, Raven and Ironwood smile. Ironwood. Who would like to tell them? 
Crow. Crow. Why don't we all say it? Winter. For once I agree. I, R, Q, O, N, W. From this moment on, your official huntsman. The nine of them gasp at once. Their scrolls go off and they see their huntsman licenses. Ruby. Wait what? Hurrah. We must have misheard you. Crow. Nope, you heard right. You lot are officially the youngest huntsman to graduate. Congratulations. Raven. I'm proud of you Yang you too Ruby. Your mother would be proud. Ruby smiled and hugged Raven. Ruby. Thank you Aunt Raven. You too Uncle Crow. Crow. You've earned it. Raven is confused at first, doesn't know if she should hug her back. Issei mouths the words hug her or I'll break you. Raven hugs her and leaves one arm open for Yang, she joined the hug. Winter hugged Weiss. Ozpin. Well done. This is a new record so go celebrate. Ironwood. You kids have fun. We'll keep an eye on Salem. Issei. I hope you have enough missiles to keep her down for a while. Winter. Thankfully we do. In fact we recently got video feed of her reappearing and she started creating a grim army. Ironwood. How about we start things off with a bang. Yang. Dot I love Atlas. Crow. Who wants to fire a nuke? Nora. I do. She pressed the launch button and the missile was fired. They knew it would be a while until it reached its target, in the meantime they get cake and have fun. Raven even opened a portal to Ty and he nearly cried from joy. He says the exact same thing Raven did about Summer being proud. Even's way was there, he got so much love and attention even from Ironwood and Raven. Weiss. Nora, let's go tell Grandma Freya. I'll fly us there. Nora. Awesome. John. We'll go check out the city. The two teams leave the room cheering. They say. I'll catch up with you guys. They immediately turn to look at those still in the room. They say. What's the catch? Ironwood. There is none, you help not just Beacon, but Atlas, Mantle, the Faunas, trained my students and my best huntsmen, helped improve dust efficiency, helped recover the relic, got Raven to join us, took down the corrupt White Fang, and find Salem. They say. I didn't do that all alone. Winter. We know but you were the key to the events that tipped the scales in our favor. Ironwood. However you still haven't told us who you really are. They say. General I've dot dot been through a lot before joining Beacon. It's difficult for me to talk about it, right now I'm trying to have a life and heal. I'm your friend and ally, I'm going to continue to protect people and kill any threat to remnant or my friends. You may not be satisfied with my answer, but just know that when I'm ready, I'll tell you everything, but rest assured that one day I will tell you though it's quite the wild story. I do have a small surprise for you in lieu of my story. Osbin. And what might that be? Issei. I've found a way to grow dust crystals like plants. Winter. What? Raven. How is that possible? They say. Look to the fields. Oh one more thing, Crow and Raven, can you two do partial transformation like just grow wings so you can fly and fight? The twins look at each other and then at him. Crow. We never actually tried. Raven. It would be helpful if we could. They say. Try and in case you succeed them let's have a test flight and spar. Also don't tell the others about me creating the dust fields. Take care everyone. He leaves. They look through the window and see multicolored crystals growing in the no longer empty fields. Winter. Sir, I'll check and see if he's telling the truth. She flies out the window and reaches the field. Winter. These dot really are dust crystals. She takes a few pieces and goes back, she shows the general and he's amazed, these are clearly more powerful than regular dust. Ironwood. Magnificent, but I'm still curious who he really is, where he came from and why he's so much more powerful. He wiped out a mountain like it was nothing, power like that was hidden for 20 years. Ozpin. It's like the gods sent him to help. Crow. That makes sense if you think about it. His speed, power, skill, abilities, looks both human and Fronas alike, can manipulate the maiden's powers, he's not surprised by much, and he's growing dust crystals like it's nothing. He's not even affected by alcohol. Raven. We don't even know anything about whoever is wearing that red armor. He's only appeared once and saved Yang from Salem's little experiment. It's like he or she appeared out of thin air just like he did. Ozpin. Issei does have a partner named Dreg. Perhaps it was him wearing that armor. Crow. It's possible. They couldn't be the same person. Issei doesn't wear armor, nor could he hide something like that. We would have seen it back in Argus. I never saw him wear it when I was watching over them. Ironwood. About that everyone was spread out to those five locations, it was Issei who helped defeat the human grim hybrids, then took off flying after Miss Xiaolong and Miss Belladonna. He might be the only one who could have reached them in time, he knew their location just like Team RWBY and JNPR. Crow. We asked him about it, he said that Raven already took Yang through her portal by the time he got there. Raven. And I was too focused on getting Yang to the hospital that I didn't even see him arrive, but I did see the armored person fly away at speeds not even Issei is capable of. Ironwood. So there's someone more powerful than him. This is quite the paradigm shift. 
Ozpin wants the kids complete their missions, we use the lamp. Everything is changing, and Salem isn't our only concern anymore. Winter, be ready to get the staff. Winter? Understood sir. Ozpin? I agree James. If none of us know about about this armored fellow, then there's more happening out there than we thought possible. Raven? There is one more possibility, Issei may be working for Salem this whole time, he may be helping us to think we have a good chance of beating her, while well, she prepared something too much for all of Remnant to handle. Think about it, he's off lying who knows where when he's alone, and he could have lead those hybrids to Yang and her teammates. Ironwood. Dot we hadn't thought about that. Ozpin you did say that Salem is very cunning. Ozpin. That she is but I doubt Issei works for her. He can do things she can't just like Crow says. Maybe the gods did send someone to help give Remnant a fighting chance. History has many people who change things for the better. The others are going through the city. Blake. So what now? Issei. Get a change of attire. Let's shake things up a bit. I'm going to get a haircut. John. I've been thinking about getting one too. Hura. Hmm. She starts to imagine John with short hair. Hura. Blushes. Oh my. Everyone freezes and look at her. Hura. What? Issei. One moment. Ren, John, emergency meeting. The three huddle up in the distance. Issei covers them with his wings. Issei. John, Ren, when a woman says that, you better bring your A-game in the bedroom, cause she sure will. John I hope your aura level is full and have stamina to spare. John. Thankfully yes. Ren. And the thought of a haircut puts a woman in the mood. Issei. When their partner looks more attractive than yes. Just like how you looked at Nora during the dance in Beacon. Ren. Dot you guys saw. John. It's so obvious even I can tell. She likes you too. Issei. Looks like you're not so dense after all. John. Look who's talking. Yang likes you. Issei. I'm not looking for a relationship just yet, okay so go get protection after your haircut, Ren, go ask out Nora on a date. Well I do what I want, Ren. Should I get a haircut? Issei. Ask Nora. We're indifferent about it. Break. They break the huddle and regroup with the girls. Weiss. What was that about? Ren. It's a guy thing. Shall we execute the plan? Issei. Pura, Nora, these two are coming with me. We'll meet you ladies later. Peace. The guys bolted. The girls are left confused. Ruby. What just happened? Weiss. Boys are weird. Nora let's go tell Grandma Freya about our early graduation. Nora. Sure. She summons a Nevermore, they hop on and fly away. Blake, Yang, Ruby and Pura go do their shopping. When they were done, they are lunch. Pura. So Yang how's your arm? Yang. Actually it's better now, almost like nothing ever happened. Blake. Glad the doctors were wrong about your nerves degrading. Yang. Yeah, me too. It still shakes a little, but it's no biggie. Ruby. Glad to see you back to full capacity sis. I propose a toast to our early graduation and Yang's recovery. They have a toast and just carry on with their day. Weiss and Nora visit their family member s and have fun and later do some changes to their styles too. Back to the guys. John. Do you think she'll like my new haircut? They say. Oh yeah, it suits you. John. Thanks. Ren. Putting my hair into a braid is actually more practical. They say. Yeah. John, go get some protection, Ren, you should have some just in case. Ren. Dot I don't think it'll happen right away. They say. It's better to have and not need than to need and not have. John. Makes sense. They say. You guys go on ahead, don't keep the ladies waiting. Ren. We could say the same thing to you. See you later Issei. John. Peace. Issei. Have fun. Issei sets out to get some new clothes, he bought a long baddest black coat, black jeans and a utility belt for his dust scales, a plain t-shirt and some body armor, nothing too fancy, but then spotted something he likes. He got a haircut, his hair isn't long anymore, it's short, styled backwards and neat, he even shaved his 5 o'clock shadow. As he was on his way back he found a shop that sold masks, and there's one that caught his attention. He bought a certain mask and outed on. Greg. Looks good. Issei. Thanks. No longer the devil of Beacon, now I'm the dragon of Atlas. He went back to the academy. Issei. Now that we graduated, we'll have to find our own places. He found them celebrating on the roof, completely unaware of his presence, so he decides to mess with them. Issei. Yo Drag, let out a howl to scare them when I give the signal. Drag. This is gonna be fun. He hovers over them and they don't even know it. Issei. Now, they get their weapons ready, Weiss uses her balance breaker. Pura readies a big fireball and ice shards. Nora. Ah, Ruby. What the fuck was that? Issei. Swear jar ha ha ha. They look up and see him laughing, he can barely stay airborne and lands while still laughing. His voice is different cause of the mask. Yang. Who are you? Issei. Ha ha you don't recognize me? Blake. Not with that mask on. He puts his hand on the mask. 
I say. I'm only gone for like an hour and you guys forget about me, that hurts. No sushi for you. Lake. Wait a minute, he slowly takes his mask off. Both Yang and Ruby blushed a little. Yang. I say. The mask is now in his hand and his face is visible. I say. Yup wow you guys look great. Volume 7 outfits. RWBY and JNPR. Thanks, Yang. You look pretty good yourself, Ruby. I'll say. Yang noticed that Ruby has the same tone of voice. She likes him too. I say. Thanks. Hey guys did you see the dust fields? Weiss. Yes we did, Yang showed us the video. I say. Race you guys 5 laps around Atlas then finish at the field. Why summons a Nevermore and Rapier Wasps? Weiss. Get on everyone. We're gonna have a race. Issei puts his mask back on and grabs a drink. Lake. What are you doing? Issei. I'll die of thirst while waiting for you guys to catch up. Weiss. Oh so is that how it is? Issei. Pretty much, let me give you a boost to keep your summons here for longer. Ready. They nod. He gives Weiss a few boosts, and her summons glow. Yang. Get set. Crow. Go. The Winter and Raven fly right by them using their wings while still maintaining their human forms, Winter and Pura use their powers, Raven only did that to increase her speed. RWBY, JNPR and Issei take off. They race, Crow and Raven are having fun, they added mid-air combat to the race and just made things more exciting. Only the riders are targets. It was so much fun for everyone, Winter let loose and has fun which she hadn't in a long time. Issei held the let and the others target him, he boosts and shoots towards the finish line, he made it and enjoys his drink, the others landed after a minute or two. Issei. Want me to give you a few more boosts next time Weiss. Weiss. You won't win next time Hayato. Issei. I welcome the challenge. Crow. Either I'm getting too old or you kids are too good. Winter. It's both. Part 14. Missions. Everything was great for a while, the nukes kept Salem at bay, but when they saw no signs of her, Ironwood stopped firing to save the remaining nukes for later. RWBY, JNPR and Issei started off small such as patrolling, stopping any fights to keep the peace. John was tricked by the ace ops into being a crossing guard. Her rejoined him one day and didn't let go of his arm, not even once, the ladies backed off after seeing her give them a death glare. They soon noticed the security system and Atlas failed, supplies are in shortage, the people are restless, and Grimm are appearing. RWBY, JNPR and Issei along with Crow go to Mantle, they encounter a lot of Grimm. They follow him to his office where they learn that Penny has aura because her creator Dr. Pietro Polandina gave his aura to her and in a way, a soul. Pura was so happy to see Penny alive and well that she found her flying later on. She needs to talk to her. She flew towards her and they met up. Pura. So it's good to see you alive and well, Penny. It is good to be back. Pura. Penny about what happened at the arena. Penny. It is alright. I know it was an accident. It's not your fault but I must know, what did you see to scare you like that? I saw so much fear in your eyes. Pura. I dot saw hundreds of your swords appear I though you were going all out. Penny. Pura I only have my nine swords I control via wires. I don't have any more than that. Someone carrying that many swords is completely impractical. Pura. So it was an illusion. Penny. Someone semblance perhaps. Maybe that's what happened to Yang after her match. Hura. There's someone named Emerald who can use illusions. It's her semblance. Penny. I've heard about her. She's one of those who lead the attack on Beacon. Hura. Yes, sniff. Penny hugs her. Penny. It is okay Pura. I'm here and I'm ready for her this time. Hura. So am I. But Cinder, Hazel, Emerald and Mercury. They are currently hiding in Mantle, Cinder sees a seer grim in the distance and hides, the other three play along as and don't plan on telling Salem anything. The Grimm approach them and Salem's voice is heard. Salem. There you three are, did you find Cinder yet? Hazel. We did find her in Mistral. We tried the diplomatic approach to increase our chances of persuading her to come back, but she fled before we could stop her, and she's too strong for us to fight. We are still looking for her. Salem. Find her and bring her back to me, I want to see if my experiment worked. Mercury. Your grace I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it failed. Salem. How do you know? Mercury. We found this in the room she was staying in. Show her emerald. She shows the images. Salem. Dot help Watts in the meantime, we'll find Cinder eventually. Hazel. Understood your grace, if I may ask, what did Atlas hit our base with? Salem. A missile that decimated our base and grim army but worry not, it can't kill me, and I have a trick or two up my sleeve. As does Watts. Go. The seer Grim died. Cinder came out of hiding. Cinder. You basically told her that I'm here. Hazel. I bought us time, she'll think you're here to get the staff and the rest of the powers. She knows about your agenda. Cinder. Are you going to leave her side? Hazel. 
I only joined her to take out Ozpin and avenge my sister. Continuing to live on for her sake is the reason I'm here Salem can't be stopped, she recruited me by showing me her powers, knowledge and immortality. Someone with all three is unstoppable. Mercury. After seeing what she did to Cinder and her five experiments, I'm not sure what to do. Who knows what else she has done to others during her time. Emerald. That's what scares me. Cinder. Dot dot I can't believe I looked up to a monster. Dot Rhodes would be disappointed to see what I've become. Mercury. Who's Rhodes? Cinder. The huntsman who trained me in combat when I was a kid, I got stronger and killed those who hurt and used me. Dot, he tried to help me, but I killed him, cause I though he was getting in my way. Dot, I killed the first person who cared for me, he was right. Dot, once you start running, you can't stop, and here I am still running. They are still being watched by the figure that follow them. Emerald. Look, Cinder, we'll find a way to get out of this. Hazel. I hope you do. A few days later, Penny continues to protect Mantle, the others are in Atlas. Clover. All right, Huntsman, this is your first official mission, everything else was a test to see how you function in the field. Today you're going into the mines first, and you'll be shadowing us to learn the ropes however Pura and Issei are requested to stay in Atlas. Crow is coming with us. Issei. We want to help. Clover. Issei you could blow us all sky high, the mine is full of unstable dust. Issei. Sigh fine. Issei. And the guy with the bad luck semblance can't. Clover. All right so gear up, we're heading out in 15. They gear up and head out, Issei and Pura are patrolling Mantle with Penny. RWBY and JNR are taking down the small Grim. When they reach the end they see the Geist Grim, and no wonder the workers ran. On their way back, they got reports of Grim in the city of Mantle and responded. Penny was the closest and joined the fight, while Issei and Pura take down other Grim. They see that the defenses are down for some reason, Grim are coming in and causing more panic, they continue to do what they can to keep the city safe. Later the Grim are dead and the security system is back up. Say, You guys get back to Atlas, I'll stay here with Penny and see what we can find. Jacques' little party might use this to cause more problems. RWBY and JNPR go back to Atlas. Issei and Penny go around Mantle looking for signs of trouble, since Issei wears his mask he can show his strength a bit and does just that, he sees a crowd running and a monolith grim behind them, he notices a man with a knife among them running behind a faunas, but the faunas doesn't know he's a target not just to the grim. Issei fires a small dragon shot and kills the Grim, he immediately flies straight towards the man who is looking back at the explosion, Issei punched his face and knocks him out, takes away his knife and calls Penny. She shows up and takes the man into custody while Issei finishes killing the Grim. Penny locks the man in prison and informs General Ironwood about whom Issei captured and he immediately goes in to wake him up and interrogate him. He slaps the man awake. Man? What? Where am I? Ironwood? You're in Atlas prison, you're gonna tell us what we want to know. Penny is searching for information about him and bingo. Penny. General, he's one of the criminals who escaped from the mines. Ironwood. Excellent work Penny, now listen up, are you working for Jacques? Where is he? Man. Go to hell. Ironwood. You're wasting your time and mine. Tell me what I want to know or you'll be put somewhere worse than the mines. Man. Change is coming Ironwood and it'll be glorious. Just not for you and those who follow you. Ironwood. It'll be the other way around. Where is Jask? Man. Up your ass and to the left. Ironwood punched the man and broke his nose. Ironwood. Tell me where he is and what he's planning or a broken nose will be the least painful activity of your evening. Penny, please wait outside. Penny. Yes, General. She leaves and closes the door. Ironwood. You have one chance to talk, tell me what I want to know or I'll force it out of you. Easy way or the hard way. Man. Dot suck my. Ironwood hit him with a right hook to the temple, he falls onto the floor and bleeds a bit. Ironwood kicks the man and he skids towards the wall. Ironwood. I'm holding back quite a bit. Make it easy for us both and talk. Man. Dot no dot you filthy front as lover why do you think they are better than us? Ironwood. Why do you think you're superior? Man. Fuck you. Ironwood. Sigh you've made your choice, hope you live to regret it. He starts to rough him up, slam him into the table hard enough to break it. He kicked the man around to wipe away the blood, it only resulted in more blood and more kicking. After 10 minutes the man finally talked. Man. All right, all right, stop, I'll talk. Dot, please, dot, dot, just stop. Ironwood. Good. Where is Jacques and what are you all planning? Man. I don't know where he is, he escaped from the mines. Dot, dot, then the Grim came, and none of us have seen him since. Dot, huff, we get our orders from him and his colleague. Dot, dot, I don't know who he is, but he calls us, gives us money and supplies, and we do what we can to make sure Robin Hill doesn't win. Ironwood. So you turned into killers. You're no different from the Grim at this point. Tell me his colleague's name. Man. We don't know his name or saw him, he calls us, and we do as he says, he knows who we are and about our families. Ironwood. What does he sound like? Man. 
a little sophisticated he's contacts us without us ever giving him out information. He hacked our scrolls. Ironwood. Arthur Watts. Of course but politics don't matter to him. Is he the one taking away our supplies and how is he funding you and your party? Man. We don't know, he just does it. We see the money in our accounts and it's all gone if we disobey. Ironwood. First you say that you want to attack the people now you're saying you never had a choice. He punched him again. Ironwood. What's the end game? Man. Spits out blood okay okay, it's the first one we willingly joined him and Jacques he'll make mental great again. Ironwood. You mean hurting Franz? Man. Yes ha 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 Atlas you'll pay for ruining our lives. Ironwood. All I ever wanted is peace and there was for a while. But people like you crave chaos. I'm going to make an example out of you. He leaves the room. Ironwood. Penny. Be ready for anything. Penny. Understood General. Ironwood has a cage set up which hangs mid-air between Atlas and Mantle, and the man is locked inside, a small tube that gives minimal amount of food and water is attached, he will be used as bait to lure away Grimm should they attack, he shows a live video feed to the public. Ironwood. Citizens of Mantle and Atlas, we have apprehended one of those who seek to destroy the peace between the faunas and human we have built, he is among those who are racists and have admitted to assault and attempted homicide. They have turned Robin Hill, her supporters, Mantle and Atlas into targets, they are working with Jacques Gell, the former CEO of the SDC, who is working with a dangerous criminal named Arthur Watts, we request all citizens to report his whereabouts should he be cited, you shall remain anonymous and safe, so do not hesitate in coming forth. We will release the information about the escaped fugitives to the public so that they may help us find them, and if you're watching, turn yourself in and you won't be punished like this man here. The feed cuts to the beat-up criminal in the cage completely exposed to the elements. Ironwood. All citizens are to travel in groups and have the right to protect themselves against assailants, get evidence against those who seek to harm you and report it to the police. This is a final warning to those who work with Jacques and Watts, you're on the wrong side, choose peace or accept your fate. Jacques and Watts I'm going to arrest you both personally. The live feed ends. Issei sees it just like everyone else. Issei. HMP. I would have one's head up the other one's ass. He finished cleaning up the streets and goes to Atlas. He's tired and goes to his dorm to rest once he informs the others. Back with the others. Ironwood. I'm assigning Ruby, Penny, Ren and Nora as Robin's bodyguards, she has a campaign tonight and it's the perfect time to strike. Here is the location. He shows them the location. Ren. We should go there early and make sure it's safe for the people. Penny. Excellent idea. Blake. General there's something we need to share with everyone. Ironwood. Yes. Ren. His emotions are in a state of flux, he's suppressing them, but there's more. Weiss. A few days ago we saw something behind to say dot a red dragon dot. Ruby. At first we though we were just seeing things, but dot it was real. Crow. Dot we saw it at Beacon 2. Raven. I saw it after our fight dot he's got more power than we can imagine. Yang. Should I tell them about his arm and the actual dragon that I saw? Dot dot no, I promised him I wouldn't. Ironwood. I am aware. I've been looking for the people in the photo, they exist, but at the same time they don't. Ozpin. What do you mean James? Ironwood. I'll tell you if I ever find out the whole truth, but for now focus on the missions, RWBY and JNPR, thank you for telling us what you saw, now we know that there's a lot more to him, you are dismissed. They leave. Later Ruby, Ren, Penny and Nora go to the campaign to protect Robin Hill and everyone else. Ruby and Penny are scouting the area, and Penny picks up several thermal signatures. She alerts the others. Immediately the lights went out and Robin's speech is cut short, Penny can't see in the dark and is handling it, but it's tough in the crowd, Ruby uses her silver eyes, and everyone stops what they are doing and cover their eyes, Ren, Nora and Penny adjusted to the change in light quickly, and they see the more criminals that have weapons in their hands, they are quickly disarmed and apprehended. Someone manages to turn on the lights after a minute. Penny calls for transport to get the criminals into custody. In the meantime Robin Hill comes over to them. Robin. What's going on? Who are you guys? Ruby. Miss Hill, you're already aware that you're a target, the general sent us to guard you. Robin. I see, thanks. Looks like we owe you one. Ruby. We're just doing our jobs. Robin. Aren't you a little young to be a huntress? Ruby. Yeah, so? Robin. Dot dot can't argue with that logic. What are your names? Ruby. I'm Ruby Rose. Nora. Nora Valkyrie. Ren. Lie Ren. Penny. I'm Penny. Robin. Pleasure to meet you all. These are my friends and teammates, Fiona, May and Joanna. She gestures to a lamb Franz, a trans woman with blue hair, and an another woman with short blue hair respectively. Robin. I've seen you before. Dot around Amity Tower near the old SDC mine, there have been supplies missing, and right after everything was taking a turn for the better. What's going on out there? Ren. 
just getting rid of the grin there, the general and everyone are just doing their part, you've heard his announcement, and he's releasing the information about the fugitives. May. He never really cared for Mantle until half a year ago now suddenly he does, the same time the SDC changed its ways among other things. Who do we have to thank for that? Nora. That would be the devil of Beacon himself, he convinced the general to see things in black and white and fix things since he has the power and connections. Fiona. Is he cute? They all look at her, and Ruby has a slight twitch in her eye. Fiona. What? I'm just curious. Henny. He is not looking for a relationship at the moment, he has his priorities and responsibilities. Ruby. Kind of hot dot. Now all eyes are on her. Ruby. I said that out loud didn't I? Ren. Yes. Ruby. Dot I. She flies out of there in an instant. Joanna. So she has a crush. Ruby goes to Atlas and on her way up there she sees the transport vehicle go down. She reaches Atlas and sees her sister near the dust fields which are growing fast. Ruby. Hey sis. What are you doing over here by your lonesome? Yang. Hey Ruby, I'm still amazed that dust crystals are growing, it's the first time this has happened in history. Ruby. Yeah, it's really something. You got to be the second person to see it, the first being Issei. Yang. Yeah dot Ruby do you like him? Ruby. Sigh I knew we would talk about it eventually. Yang. I saw how you looked at him when he took off that mask dot you like him don't you? Ruby. Yeah dot I do but you love him. If anyone should be with him then it should be you. She's surprised by her little sister's maturity. Yang. But dot Ruby if you love him then. Ruby. I don't love him like you do, I do have a crush, but that's all it is. Yang, he treats everyone equally, but you two get along really well, I saw it on day one, he's the only one who makes really stupid puns, and I say he's the perfect one for you cause I fear no one else can bear so many puns. Yang. Oh dot dot hey that last part is not true dad loves my puns, Ruby. But the rest of it is, Issei definitely went through something that made him afraid of love, so give him time, there is something you two have, and he doesn't realize it yet, but I know he will. Give him time sis. Plus I'm still underage for him to date me. Yang. My little sister is all grown up. Ruby. I drink milk, it was bound to happen. Yang. PFT ha 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 ha. You still have ways to go. Ha ha. Yang hears her scroll go off and it's a text from Issei. Ruby. And I'm outta here. Later. She flies away using her semblance. As time goes by, the nine of them fulfill their duties perfectly, balancing personal time, duty, teamwork etc like true huntsmen. Ozpin, Winter, Raven and Crow are so proud, they inform Ty, and he's so happy. He later went to Summer's grave and sat there, he spoke of the good news as if she was sitting right next to him. Ty. Our little girls made it. I wish you could see them now, Ruby looks just like you. We miss you Summer. Sniff. RWBY, JNPR and SA are selecting jobs off the board and completing them one by one as time goes by, Salem isn't showing up in any drone surveillance footage, and no Grim are visible. She's currently underground. Salem. You've done well Ozpin, but you can only delay the inevitable, you'll regret what you have done once my plans come to fruition. Hazel, Emerald and Mercury are looking for a place where Cinder can hide. Watts is looking through the Atlas military security system. Watts. What did you hit us with James? He kept looking and looking and finally found it, he found the nukes. Watts. Aha. That's quite the deterrent you have against a grim invasion, it is such a shame that something is about to happen to these missiles. Just because you know I'm here doesn't mean you can stop me. He starts hacking into the system. Watts. Now we wait. Ha 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 ha. Later RWBY, JNPR, Issei and Crow are searching for more of the escaped criminals, the others which are captured, gave some info about the funds they received, Jacques had been embezzling money of the SDC since he took over, and is using it to buy the votes of the people, these are only claims, and solid evidence is needed. They uploaded the confessions given by the fugitives and Robin Hill getting more votes, at this rate she'll win by a landslide. She's still guarded by Penny, Ruby, Ren and Nora. There are still more grim appearing but are quickly disposed of, the advancement in dust research has reached new heights, one small lightning dust can power an entire building for a week, more dust combinations are possible, but only with dust from the fields, the scientists still can't figure out how or why this particular field is growing dust like this and at such a fast pace, nothing in the atmosphere or in the soil or anything. They are baffled but continue to research the never-ending supply of dust. They find small multicolored crystals between the others and observed it, it fell out of its place and starts growing, some look like regular dust crystals, but some look like scales, and those have more power within and are more stable. Ironwood applied it to the weapons technology, he added different elements to bullets, fire and earth dust, created armor-piercing rounds that could pierce tank armor, and melted even further, when the round turned into lava, ice and fire, to create steam cover, a non-lethal option in riots. 
the temperature of the steam depends on the amount of fire dust used and the environment, Issei gave them the idea of hot springs in mantle and construction started, another gift from Atlas and Robin Hill, showing her approval of their kind gestures in improving life, she supports them, and she was getting more votes. The criminals try to assassinate her, but this time Issei is guarding her and her crew, someone fired a gun, and Issei blocked the shot with his sword, several others opened fire. Issei dodged most bullets and blocked those aimed at Robin and her crew, Issei heard shots being fired from behind and saw her and her crew open fire in self-defense, they don't carry weapons just for show. Some of the assailants didn't have aura and are wounded, Issei blitzed the rest of them. Fiona. So you're the devil of Beacon. Issei. That's just my nickname. My name is Issei. He takes off his mask. Fiona blushes a bit. Fiona. Hello, Issei. Greetings. Are any of you injured? Fiona. We're good. Thanks. Issei. Just doing my job. Now if you'll excuse me, these idiots needs to been taken off the streets. He calls for a large transport, Winter answers, and is personally coming to pick these criminals up and throw them into jail. May. You're quite the powerhouse Issei. Issei. I guess so. I'm just doing my part. So how's the campaign coming along? Robin. Pretty good thanks to Atlas cleaning up the streets, you brought about a lot of changes within a year. Issei. I shared my point of view, nothing more. Robin. Well it changed everything, who knows what would have happened if you didn't talk some sense into the higher ups. How did you manage that? They say. Let's just say that they made a deal with the devil. May. And that would be you? They say. I'm not called the devil for nothing. I do what I must like what you're doing. They hear the ship coming. Robin. They say, mind telling us what the general is doing out there in the old mines in the Amity Theater. There's not another vital festival for months. They say. Sigh well you're going to be councilwoman soon, so it's only fair you should know, we've built a communication tower and we'll launch it soon, there's a bigger threat than your competition out there, you've seen missiles being fired right? Fiona? Yes. Issei. We fired them towards the unnamed continent because we found massive grim spawning poles there that have enough grim to start an invasion. Because of the hostile landscape, people didn't settle there, and grim increased in numbers without limits. We will tell the world and unite them, if that happens then we will wipe them out. Robin? you got proof of this? He shows her a clip of the grim lands. Fiona. Shit dot. Issei. We've wiped out quite a bit, this is why we've been trying to improve in every way we can, training almost relentlessly, working together etc. Robin. Wow, dot good. Thanks for telling us. Issei. Sure but don't tell anyone just yet, we're going to do it together, if you or anyone blew the whistle, then it'll look like we've been hiding and planning something bad behind everyone's backs, it'll ruin any chance we have at unity. Fiona. Make sense. You've helped a lot so it's only fair that we do as you ask. Issei. Thank you. The airship arrives, Issei throws them into the transport, and Winter stays on guard. Issei. All clear. Winter. Roger that. She takes the prisoners into custody, and the interrogation began, they found nothing new, no sightings of Watson shock. Winter wants that old man behind bars. Issei is now in his time off, and this time Weiss, Blake, Yang and Pura are looking after Robin and her team. Penny is out there scanning for more criminals and killing Grimm. A few months go by and all is quiet, Robin is the new appointment councilwoman, RWBY, JNPR and Issei get a new place to live, they earn enough to do so and are quick to respond, Ironwood is still on high alert, the dust fields have turned into a small crystal forest, lights are set up, and when they light up the crystals, even people in Mantle can't see them and spend nights outside enjoying the sight. Some of the dust seeds are later exported to the other kingdoms, Ozpin helps Glinda look after Beacon from Atlas, all is well there, and she's more relaxed, but when she found out RWBY, JNPR and Issei graduated early, she was worried but felt relaxed when she saw how much they have grown. Cinder is still hiding, trying to overcome the nightmare she sees when she closes her eye. She still feels like she is being raped by the Grimm, luckily Hazel, Mercury and Emerald are there for her. Salem uses her grim as her eyes and ears and checks on Mantle, Atlas and her opponents, she sees Issei and wants to know why he's so strong, how he decimated her forces at Beacon, but notices a lot of bottled up emotions. Salem. Looks like I'll have to take my time. Enjoy it while you can children, I hope you all grow up enough to accept death when I come for you. Salem decided to stay under the radar and ordered Hazel, Emerald, Mercury to do the same, only to find Cinder and bring her back. Now a year has gone by, they find no suspicious activity, but keep drones flying over the grim lands, Issei trains with everyone, no one stays weak, the lamp is kept in the vault along with the staff, Raven looked after her tribe, but visits her brother and daughter, that's along with Ruby and smiles every now and then, Crow barely drinks now, Robin is informed about Salem, 
how her semblance is manipulation of Grimm a cover story and is the reason why the kingdoms were attacked, she believed it after seeing the footage, Watts and Shock are yet to be found, Winter and Weiss are enjoying family time, even JPR RWBY and Issei got to spend time with her, she was a grandmother to all of them. After a while, she passed away in her sleep. Everyone mourned her, she was given a proper funeral. Nor and everyone took comfort in knowing she passed away peacefully knowing the love of family, seeing Nora all grown up, surrounded by great people made her happy, before she passed away, she wrote letters to everyone who helped make her last days the best ones ever. A long letter to the Schnee family telling them how she loved them like their own, she was reunited with not just her biological grandchild, but gained three more, Willow and Klein were always there to listen to her and put her sorrows behind her, she wrote a big letter for Nora, telling her how proud she is to see her make great life choices, choosing to help, having great people around her and much more, poor Nora completely broke down and had the letter laminated and hung in her room, she had the photos she took with her, and the Schnee family had them printed out and laminated, Free left a small letter for Issei too, saying she wouldn't have had this if it wasn't for him. Issei went to her grave, removed the snow and picked one of the empty dust scales from his arm, he boosted a few times and transferred the power to the scale, he plants it behind her grave, and a clear crystal pillar emerged, he carved the crystal pillar in a way that light would always be directed towards the grave, be it day or night, this is his tribute to her, a shining pillar, an example of strength, endurance, duty, love, family bonds and sacrifice. Issei. You can be at peace, you did your part now we shall do ours, I promise. Day NPR walks over with flowers in hand. Nora. Wow, Issei. Hey guys. I just came to pay my respects. Nora. Thank you. It means a lot. Issei nods. Hurrah. Did you do this? Issei. Free earned this, she deserves recognition even after her passing. Nora placed the flowers on the grave, everyone pays their respects and leave, they sit in silence, Issei goes to get some drinks and pours them into glasses for everyone. Issei. Let's raise a toast. They raise their glasses. Issei. To free a Valkyrie, the Winter Maiden, a friend, kind, wise, caring and a grandmother to us all. May she rest in peace. Everyone. To Freya. They drink, Nora was so upset that she cried for days, the world felt emptier now, but they pressed on. Doing their job, killing Grimm and helping the other kingdoms, Issei, Ozpin, RWBY and JNPR visit Beacon, Glinda is surprised to see them, Ozpin gives her a week off with pay to relax, he does his job and realized how tough it is without her, not even coffee kept him awake. The nine of them go to a bar, Junior nearly pisses himself when he sees Yang, who is now a fully licensed huntress. He just gives them free drinks to avoid any collateral damage and getting his balls crushed. Luckily Yang didn't do anything except have fun with her friends, Ruby is now 18, so she can legally drink, turns out she is a light drinker. Issei kept a 5 o'clock shadow just like Crow. Yang liked it and she stayed close to him, Ren and Nora finally started dating. John and Pura had a pregnancy scare but are now even more careful. Cinder, Emerald, Hazel, Mercury and Watts are still under the radar, though Ironwood is still looking for them. Issei is feeling a lot better now, Cinder is recovering from her trauma, while Salem is watching and planning. Salem. The devil of Beacon, you changed everything. Who and what are you? She noticed a cloaked figure appearing where her henchmen were last seen, she sent a seer grim. Salem. Why are you following my servants? Figure, Salem. It's best to answer me. The figure gave her the middle finger. Salem. I can sense hostility, but it's not directed towards me, who do you hate the most? An illusion of Ruby and Issei appears. Salem. So you hate them too, perhaps we can help each other. The illusions disappeared. A and D she took off her hood. Salem. Neopolitan. The infamous thief. I have a proposition for you. Neo. Types do tell. Salem. There's something I need you to get and only you can do it. Neo nods. The nine go to different kingdoms after a while, seeing their old friends and teachers in Beacon was fun, but they have jobs to do, lots of huntsmen need help, and they gladly accept, the Aesops are looking after Atlas and Mantle, Crow is being an active huntsman and helps Ironwood where he can, Robin sees him around every now and then and gets to know him, Raven helps out a bit, visits Ty and tried to reconcile with him, she even got her gear upgraded, she wears a grim mask with night vision built into it, thanks to Issei's idea of partial transformation, she can fly, scan and fight at the same time. She felt stronger and more capable, she would contact Yang, whenever she needs help she was there in an instant, the mother and daughter tag team was too much for any grim and rogue huntsman to take on when they all meet up again. Her recreated a new attack combo, she would use her polarity semblance to combine two or more bladed weapons from the base and spin them, combined with her powers, it was a large elemental shuriken that was a fully controlled long-range attack. She did the same with Ruby's and Crow's scythes, when Maria saw this she instantly knew that it was a mimic of her old weapon. And he did the same with her swords. There have been reports of dust crystals growing in destitute areas all around Remnant. 
Issei has been planting them to help the people, and it has helped and won't be much competition for the SDC. The lower class can have nice things too, they can defend themselves and have resources now. Salem's defected team found these growing and are baffled by it, but Hazel likes them, he tests them out and is quite pleased with the results. Cinder is slowly realizing that she is enjoying the peace and is having dot fun, Mercury and Emerald argue and mess with each other like couple, while Hazel is like a patient and caring big brother. They steal a bit every now and then, but Hazel tells them to get decent and honest jobs, they do that, Cinder becomes a cashier, Mercury becomes a bartender which he has a talent for, Emerald is a waitress, and Hazel is a bouncer, they work in the same bar and keep an eye out for each other. One time in Mantle, Issei caught sight of a suspicious man walking into the alleyway, he turned on his location in his scroll and followed him, he was was ambushed by dozens of criminals and former White Fang members in a confined space, but it's nothing he can't handle. Criminal. You're stuck with us in here now you bastard, Issei. PFT dot dot ha 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 oh I'm not the one stuck in here with you, you're stuck in here with me. Be promoted tonight and cut them down one by one, by sheer luck one of the assailants managed to shoot him in his leg, Issei didn't react to the pain, but did notice the small wound, he looked at it, and the shooter, he grabbed the gun, promoted to Rook and crushed it, he grabbed the shooter and shoved the broken gun into his mouth. The sharp metal pieces hurt him, and Issei threw him towards his fallen comrades, Penny reached Issei and saw the carnage. Penny? Wow, Issei. They're alive but need medical care ASAP. Penny. So do you. She gestures towards his bleeding leg, he sticks his fingers into his wound and pulls out the bullet. Penny. If I was human I would puke, doesn't that hurt? Issei. Yeah but I've got a high pain tolerance. Call the police. Penny. Already on their way. Issei. Good. He starts looking around the room and feels a draft. Issei. A false wall. He punched through the wall and sees in cave that goes underground. Penny goes in scanning the labyrinth of tunnels, RWBY arrives on the scene. Blake. What happened in here? Issei. I happened. We found a passage that goes deep underground, Penny is making a map and seeing where it leads. Yang. Issei you're hurt. They look at his still bleeding leg. Issei. I'll be fine. Weiss. Still. Ruby grabs a medical kit that is Yang's bike tool compartment. Yang patches his leg and saw the blood on his fingers and then the bullet near his feet. Yang. You pulled out the bullet with your bare fingers. Issei. Yeah. It wasn't embedded that deeply so I just pulled it out. Yang finished patching up his leg, Penny comes out of the passageway with shock gel in hand. He sees Weiss and is livid, Weiss has never seen him so angry. He walks straight towards her. Issei taps on his shoulder, Jacques turns around and his backhand slapped, he stumbled and fell. Issei. Listen here Folshni, you are going to go to jail and stay there quietly as long as you live, you try anything and I'll do to you what you did to your family, you know what? Let's start. Your family has renounced you, they are happier than ever, you are nothing to them. Jock looks at Weiss. Jask. Weiss please help me I'm your father get this filthy front is away from me. Weiss. No dot dot you're not and he's more human than you ever were. Blake wants to tear him limb from limb, Ilya's parents died in the mines he forced them to work and knowing how dangerous it is now she's insulting the man who undid the damage he caused. Blake. I'm going to cut out your tongue old man. Jock cowers in fear. They say. Blake, not now, not here. He's going to face justice the right way, he may lose a tongue, but will gain victory and seeing his view of the fun has become reality. Also we need to find Watts and tell us how he's been helping these idiots around us who are currently knocking on death's door. Blake backs off and waits outside. Ruby. So Penny did you find anything else? Penny. Lots of stuff, I've created a map and took down the remaining criminals down below, now the authorities can help arrest them because I do not have enough cuffs. She shows them a map, it really is a labyrinth, but she marked the dead ends, the police arrive and took over, Issei, Penny and RWBY give their statements and are free to go, they go to Atlas cause Issei needs to get the wound closed, once that's done he continues with his day, but feels a little woozy, he goes back to the doctor, and they get a blood test, they find poison in his bloodstream, the bullet that hit him was laced with it, it was one of the deadliest poisons, but it had little to no effect on him other than dizziness, the doctors give him an antidote, and he's sleeping off the poison, the doctors are wondering why he's basically basically immune to such a poison, they find that his blood is full isn't like anything they have ever seen, they inform the general, and he is now seriously considering using the lamp to find out what Issei really is, but knows that Salem is top priority. Later Neo is disguised as an Atlasian citizen, and sees RWBY enter the hospital, she overhears them talk about Issei, and that he's been poisoned, she follows, disguised herself as a doctor and follows, they find Issei is still sleeping, but looks a bit uncomfortable, Yang is by his left side, and Ruby is on the right, a doctor shows up, and tells them that only two visitors are allowed, Weiss and Blake will come back later. Ruby sees red scales on Issei's collarbone. Ruby? What the? Since when did he have scales? Yang looks at them. Yang. 
They aren't just growing on his arm, Ruby. And they look like dust crystals. Did he experiment on himself? She looks at Yang who put a finger on her lips. Yang. Keep it down Ruby. Ruby. Wait you knew about this. Yang. Yes but he made me promise not to, you just saw it so no point in hiding it from you, but don't tell anyone. Ruby. Dot fine, but I want to know why he has scales on his body. Yang. I don't know, he wouldn't tell me dot it was just limited to his arm and now it's spreading to his upper body, it's like he's turning into something else. Even his wings are turning red and his brown eyes are turning green I could get lost in those eyes. Ruby. Dot sis I finally got over the crush I had, don't go around bringing those feelings back. Yang. Right sorry. Look at this. She lifts up his sleeve and Ruby sees his arm. Ruby. Wow dot. Yang. That's not all. Grab his left hand and use your aura like I do. They hold his hand and use their aura, they feel a lot of power flowing through their bodies, and then they see a dragon, sleeping until it suddenly opened its eyes, Ruby and Yang freak out and are back in the hospital next to Issei who is now waking up. Issei. Dot dot oh hey girls dot you look like you saw a monster. The two catch their breath and just play along. Ruby. No no, we were just worried, first time we ever saw you get injured and poisoned, reminded us of how Uncle Crow got hurt on our way to Mistrell. Say, I'll be fine Ruby. I'm already feeling better. Yang. You have one of the deadliest poisons known in your blood right now. Say, Like I told him once, I'm just built different. Ruby. We know Dot Issei I saw the scales. She knows that she's a bad liar and Issei can easily see through her act. Issei. You saw her. Huh? Please don't tell anyone Ruby. Ruby. Sure but you have to tell us what's going on with you. Issei. Okay okay I'm not really a bat Fronis. I'm a dragon Fronis. Ruby and Yang. What? Issei. We are strong, but so few in numbers, we stay hidden to protect our race from those who fear power and misuse it and destroy it, I'm the strongest of my kind. That's why I never talk about where I come from, we look human at first, but turn into dragons as we get older. That's why I have scales, claws and wings. Yang. Why hide? With all that power, Franas wouldn't have suffered. Issei. Because I'm the last of my kind. The two sisters are wide-eyed. Issei. We have low birth rates thus the low numbers, we crave conflict and die in battle such as the Great War, some of us don't let our desire for battle consume us and use our power to help, I'm one of those and now the only one. Which is why I'm doing everything I can to help bring peace to Remnant while I still can. Ruby. How long do dragons live? Issei. Dot I'll only live as long as an average human, that's your real question. Ruby. Dot you saw right through me. Yang. What about Drag? Does he know? Issei. Yes. Yang. Dot Ruby can you give me a moment with Issei? Ruby? Sure. She leaves. Yang. Issei dot. Issei. Yang if this is about what I think it is then. Yang. I saw it. Issei. Beg pardon. Yang. A red dragon, I saw it again and I can't pretend like I didn't. Issei. Sigh that's what I look like when I turn into a full dragon. You felt the power too. She nods. Issei. I see dot don't get hooked on it, it can corrupt you if you're not careful. Yang. All right. Dot, I rely on my own strength and team anyway. Issei. Smart choice. Yang. Issei if you're the last of your kind shouldn't you think about continuing your bloodline. Issei. Dot I used to but dot dot not yet. Yang. Dot dot oh you know I wouldn't mind having strong kids dot with you. Issei. Yang I'm not ready for a relationship. It's best to choose someone else. Yang. But Issei you're the one I want to be with dot. Issei. Dot Yang Sai I really don't know what to say to you that won't hurt you. Yang. You can tell me why you won't go out with me, Issei. Fine I owe you that much, us dragons feel emotions more deeply than others. It's a double-edged sword because we love deeply, but go through much more pain when said love is betrayed. Dot, I wasn't just hurt Yang I was wounded and still am. I don't know if I ever want to experience love like that again, Yang. But I'm not her, Issei. I know but I'm not ready to love again. Dot, not yet, Yang. Dot, I don't blame you. I'd feel the same the way. Sorry you went through that, Issei. It's life, I was a horny teenager that got attached and fell too quickly, so yeah, there's that dot yang don't wait for me, I'm not going to make you wait, well not knowing if I can ever reciprocate your feelings, what if I'm depriving the right guy of your love, yang. You're depriving yourself right now. I see the right guy in front of me. You're a good man to say, you deserve to be happy too, and they say good things come to those who wait, so I'll wait winks dot. Issei. Smirks, I'm flattered, yang. That's what I was going for, rest up Issei, the others will be visiting later, and your secret is safe with me. She leaves. Issei. Dot what do I do? Greg. About her or the fact that both Yang and Ruby somehow got into the gear and saw me. Issei. They did what? Greg. You heard me, I saw these two right in front of me. Issei. 
That's why they looked frightened when I woke up. I hope my cover story is good enough. Greg. Me too. Neo used her semblance to stay invisible, she knows she can't take on any of them since they became so strong, she sees Weiss and Blake in the distance. Neo walks away, she finds the lab and looks for his blood sample, finds it along with his reports, she steals both and leaves the hospital, she goes to the edge of mantle and finds a small Nevermore Grim, she gives the items to it and it flies away. After a while Salem get her hands in them. Salem. I wish I had known you before Neo, you performed perfectly. Now then my little pet, you have resisted a lot, but like those before you, I'll break you and you'll be my best creation yet. She caresses the face of a wolf front as with silver eyes, she cut her finger, let her black blood drips into a glass bottle, and adds Issei's blood into it, it starts reacting, they merged. She fills a syringe with a solution and injects it into the faunus. He screams and is thrown into a grim pool. The air bubbles are filled with his cries for help, it's music to her ears. Soon there is silence, and the large claw comes out followed by a unique grim. It sees a beowulf and attacks then devours it and gains a wolf-like form. Salem can sense the power coming from it, it rivals hers and can grow stronger. Salem. My precious creation, bring me the silver-eyed girl named Ruby Rose and the man named Issei aka the Devil of Beacon, kill anyone who gets in your way my little hound. The head of the monster retracts. Hound. Yes mistress. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.